is inspired by the biological neuron right to perform specific tasks of uh, the unit right so what is artificial neural network motivation for neural network which are the different application of neural network then neurons and biological motivation that we'll see what is perceptron what is the multi-layer networks how feed forward network works what is the activation function what is the back proportion algorithm right and we will see different notation in this we will solve some examples on back propagation and then we'll see types of <coughs> neural network architecture <coughs> so what is artificial neural network so artificial neural networks is a biological inspired network of artificial neurons configured to perform specific tasks right so this artificial neuron is inspired by the biological neuron right to perform specific tasks that's why it's called artificial neural right artificial it is created by the inspire uh, by getting the inspiration from the biological neuron and many of the recent advancements have been made in this field of artificial intelligence like voice recognition image recognition robotics using artificial neural networks right so in such case in such case the implementation of neural network is required right and this acquires knowledge through learning right it can be supervised or unsupervised right so we have seen the simple methods that is linear regression and logistic regression so linear regression we can see that in that we don't have a discrete value right we have some upper bound or real numbers from which you get some value and in logistic regression we classifying the data into two class it's a binary classification right but there are some complex uh, you can say application in which you require more nonlinearity, more understanding of data so in such case you require neural network right <coughs> so the term neural is derived from the human that is animal nervous system basic functional unit that is neuron or you can say nozzle that are present in the brain and other parts of the human body so neural network is a group of algorithms that certify the underlying relationship in a set of data similar to the human brain right so how the brain works right initially the newborn baby they don't or they don't understand what is cat what is dog right but then later on by giving them the example showing them the picture of cat repeatedly dog repeatedly showing that thing the network is trained and then after a certain time they are able to recognize that right so by inspiring this thing right they have implemented this neural network right so the neural network helps to change the input so that the network gives the base result without redesigning the output procedure so these are the some of the application where you can consider <coughs> a neural network these are the some of the examples there are n number of examples so fraud detection uh, and you want to uh, whether the transaction is genuine or not that thing you want to find out 
pattern recognition the computer vision is a whole field then marketing and financial application recommender systems and your natural language processing task where the data are complex and that complex understanding is required right so initially the neural network was there right but due to some limitations right because they require a lot of computations and all it is not that much popular but after the introduction of gpu more processing power right the neural network got popularity then deep neural network and then deep learning techniques right so this is a biological neuron it looks like this and there are different parts to it so whenever some inputs comes here right it's basically chemical when it's a biological right so it gets the input process something here and then pass it to here right so these are the dendrite you can see it's a inputs and this is the output of that neuron this you can consider as neuron okay so this cell body now same that is your neuron here you process something on your input data and you pass right so dendrite it receives signal from other neurons so this is your input cell body or soma it sums all the incoming signals to generate some output exon structure right this is the exon when the sum reaches a threshold value neuron fires means you can consider it activates and it the signal travels to this right and basically this is just to stop the signal get weaker right and the last is exon or you can say synapses it's the output of this neuron so it's a point of interaction of one neuron with other neurons means if you have another neuron so this output will go to input of that neuron right and basically what happened there are n number of neurons in the brain and it possible that at a time not all the neurons are activated based on the input it possible that this will not activate right so means there is no use of that information with respect to that neuron right so this is a biological neuron and based on this the author designed this artificial neuron this is the structure of artificial neuron so these are the input this is your neuron and this is your output from that neuron and there are some processing part over here what process is does so if you can divide in this two part this sums your input means some linearity and then add some non linearity to this right and then this will be your output this will be your output so this is what this is you can say a perceptron this is a perceptron right so this is a basic structure of artificial neural right now i am saying neural it's not a network right now we have only one so it's a neuron okay so if you see the similarity between biological neuron and artificial neuron the cells right nucleus that soma that is your node dendrites that is your input synapses you can say weights or interconnection means how strongly you want to give your output right so this 
this is your weights this thing so to when signal passes from here what weight should I give to that signal right that is this thing right and exon that is your output right <clears throat> okay now let's see this competition graph and this is a useful thing right when we studied the linear regression right we come up with uh, equation that is theta 0 plus theta 1 x right or you can say hypothesis theta 1 x right <clears throat> and mm, with the logistic regression also we come up with or you can this thing you can write like this theta transpose x right you can consider x0 over here this is your hypothesis and when it comes to logistic regression for that logistic regression what is that it's a g of theta transpose x and this is your sigmoid activation function so this is 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus theta transpose x right okay so this is for linear regression this is your hypothesis h of theta x is equal to this thing you can write and this is for logistic regression h of theta x is this right logistic regression linear regression now see this when you have one neuron or you can pay perceptron we have input right the input you can consider as the feature of one example feature of one example suppose um, the house uh, house price prediction so in that case your x1 can be the size of the house age of the house number of bedrooms so these are the features which you will pass as an input which you will pass as an input to this neuron right okay then what will happen what this neuron will perform right on this x this is your feature right you can have like x on that feature with some weight so this is a weight weight associated with that it will multiply with that right similar thing it will multiply with that and then on that Z on that Z this is Z it will apply some nonlinearity right I am not saying it's a sigmoid function right now I am saying some nonlinearity right so it's a nonlinearity will be added and whatever output you have predicted output y hat that is g of z only g of z this nonlinearity function on z right that is y hat right so that is a y hat and then you will find out the loss between your output y hat also you can indicate as a right a you can write like this a is g of z this thing this is your a and that is your output so that's why a with y this is your original that loss you will find out and then you train then you will train right so this is the computation graph so if you remove this there is no lin non linear data in this then it work like a linear regression you can see w transpose x plus some bias or constant right 
you can have one here so this will work like your linear regression if I apply sigmoid here if G is sigmoid if G is sigmoid then this is logistic regression this will be logistic regression right because in linear regression we find this theta transpose that thing is done by this now if you don't apply this that will be your output so it is linear regression but now on this if you apply sigmoid you can see here now a logistic regression hypothesis g here right so that that will give you 1 upon 1 plus e raised to minus theta transpose x because this is a sigmoid function so if you apply that sigmoid function over here then this will work as logistic regression this is your logistic regression that we implemented with neural network that we implemented using neural network right <coughs> okay now let's move to the multi-layer neural network previously we have only one neuron now let's move to the multi-layer neural network right so you can see this is now a network this is now a network so one two three total four layers I have so what is the name of each layer so this is your input layer right this is your output layer and whatever you have in between that is your hidden layer that is your hidden layer right <coughs> now if someone ask you right how many layers are there how many layers are there in your this multi-layer neural network how many layers are there in this multi-layer neural network then your answer must be 2 then you will say why not 3 right so just see here this input it does not have any neuron right specific neuron it's a just an input feature so we will not count this input while we count the layers of neural network right so this as a zero right and in square bracket I will indicate this is layer 1 and this is layer 2 right so in layer 1 in layer 1 how many neurons are there 1 2 3 3 neurons are there right in layer 2 how many neurons are there 1 right and this is fully connected network you can say means each feature or each neuron is connected to other neuron in the next layer other neuron in the next layer right you can see there is no connection between neurons in that particular layer right these neurons are not connected so they are not connected okay so just remember this notation okay so input hidden output layer and number of layers if you want to say then count from first hidden layer to output layer right you need not to count this input and how many hidden layers so right now we have only one hidden layers so whatever you have between input and output that is your hidden layer right and you can see this line this line basically indicate weights right so if there is some value of x3 
there is some value of x3 then what should be the value when it comes here right so suppose the weight is 0 0.5 right and i will pass one over here then it will not get one but it will get one into 0 0.5 that is 0 0.5 so that is the important of weight means what weight i should give to each feature what weight i need to give to each feature right so this line all the line indicates that thing weights so whatever you are passing here what weight you should give to that right and i have shown the structure of that one neuron right it is divided in two portion linear and non-linear in both the thing and this is your predicted this is your predicted <clears throat> now let's see the competition graph for this right <clears throat> so same architecture I am using and now I am writing the equation for this or you can say computation graph right so what is the input input is x weight yes initially there is no weights so we randomly initialize the weight and there is a bias bias associated with each neuron there will be bias associated with each neuron now you know what this first half will do from this neuron it will predict this z it will predict this and what is that w transpose x plus b what is this w transpose x plus b right so this is your neuron and this is the division of that so this is the reflection of it So it's a W transpose X plus B, but here we don't have that W transpose X plus B. We have something W1 X plus B1, something like that. Right? So X, you know, X is feature. At 6, a feature vector. Right? What is this W1? Right? And what is this Z1? what is this b1 one thing we know here it is written in square braces means it indicates layer so we know this is 0 this is 1 and this is 2 this is 2 right so and I have written z1 so for this first neuron if I say then this is z one means first layer and first neuron z two one means second neuron first layer same as z three one third neuron first layer so this z one is combination of this thing this z one is combination of z11 z21 and z31 so this is the thing right now what will be z11 what will be z11 so z we know that is w transpose x plus b right why transpose that i will explain you w transpose x plus b so same thing you need to write here for this z11 so here instead of this you will write w1 transpose x plus b but now B is for this neuron. So B1, 1. 
right weight going to neuron 1 in layer 1 same way z21 you can write like this w2 1 transpose x plus b21 same way w3 1 transpose x plus b3 1 okay now <coughs> x is common x plus now this thing what is that weights weights going to layer 1 that indicates weights going to layer 1 weights going to layer 1 and that I can indicate like this W1 weights going to layer 1 plus bias bias going to layer 1 so your B1 is this this vector this vector so your z1 is what z1 is this w1 x plus b1 what is w1 w1 is w11 w21 w31 that vector what is b1 it's a b11 b21 b31 x will remain as it is okay then what is the next step <coughs> The next step is some non-linearity or non-linear function on this individual term that is z11 right on z21 on z31 right so same thing I write I can write it over here so g of z11 g of z1 z21 g of z31 instead of that what i can write i can write g of z1 so that thing i have written g of z1 so this will give me you can indicate that as a1 as well right so this thing is your a this is your z this is your a this whole right if this specific thing I want to highlight then this is a 1 1 and that is G of Z 1 1 same thing for this same thing for this I will make a vector and that is my a 1 now this thing this is also divided in this two part now what will the notation over here Z now you know the layer that is 2 which neuron 1 which neuron 1 now z12 is what now for this neuron these are the inputs whatever a11 you have a21 have a31 have that is your input that will work as an input which was this in this layer layer 1 right so that will be multiplied by this weight and will be here so with this weights right here the weights that we have indicated it's like this w1 this is your z1 then activation on that that is a1 now with weight this is your w2 weights going to layer 2 so it will multiply with this a1 so that is the thing w2 a1 plus bias bias that is going to layer 2 so b2 and activation on that this thing and activation on that that is your a12 that is your g of z12 
this is your output that is y hat that is y hat so you can see the vectorized version rather than iterating for neuron in one step we are going forward right so taking the features initializing some random weights and with some bias we are starting and then we are moving forward so for this is uh, for layer one this thing this thing is for layer two right so in one step we have calculated this thing this portion or you can see this half in next activation on that that we have done next second layer so we have calculated Z and then activation on that that is your Y hat any doubt in this yes okay so this thing are you talking about the yes, okay so what will happen in logistic regression we were seeing the logistic regression and we use that uh, w transpose x right in linear regression we use that hypothesis that is theta transpose x that was our tra uh, hypothesis and then we move to the okay we move to the logistic regression where we have applied the sigmoid on that we have applied sigmoid on that right because in that we want to classify and the range that we want to bring that is between 0 to 1 now here this first half first half will gather your inputs first half will gather your inputs and weights that is assigned to that neuron and based on that it will calculate something means now it has some information on that information it will activate means whether the information it should pass to that or not or what information it should pass right if it is a ReLU activation function and if your z is negative value then it will not pass that right it will make it zero it will make it zero right so on that information it will perform some task and then it will give it to next neuron right still doubt okay any other doubt and remember that linear regression is not a line linear regression is not a line any other doubt no okay so same thing you can see over here right so I have weights I have Z11 A11 right activation on this and this will gather the all features and with weight perform some um, linear function right w transpose x plus b and have bias as well and then on that activation function and then it will pass to the next neuron having some weight and to yes now okay right so it will pass here so you can see that what I have written the previously same thing 
I am writing over here Z11 Z11 that is W11 transpose X plus B11 same thing A11 is equal to G of Z11 same thing for Z2 A2 Z3 A3 right so this is first neuron so this thing is what Z1 this thing is what your w1 w1 i am writing right plus b1 plus b1 okay and this is what a1 is equal to g of z1 okay so this thing we have seen now your second layer second layer is this so now you understand that right second layer z12 and you there is only one neuron so you can write z12 or z2 as well same way w12 transpose a1 plus b1 2 right so here as we have only one neuron you can skip this thing as well okay one thing we is still confusing why there is transpose why there is transpose right so let's understand here okay so let's understand weight how to give the or the notation of these weights so this is layer one that you know this is layer two right mm. okay this square bracket you know it indicates weights going to layer one weights going to layer one weights going to layer one okay now you can see these weights this which is going to neuron one this which is going to neuron one and this thing which is going to neuron one now from that weight particular line this first thing indicates this weight going to which neuron of this layer this weight indicates this weight is going to which neuron of this layer so right now you can see one and one means this weight is going to neuron one uh, this weight is going to layer one and in that layer one the first neuron same way first neuron of layer one right and the second thing second thing is indicate that the weight is coming from which neuron from the previous layer means this is the zero right and assume that's a neuron and not doing anything this neuron will not do anything just passing the input right but just to keep the convention same for understanding i'm just assuming there are neuron so this thing indicates the weights going to this layer to this neuron in that layer and coming from this neuron from the previous layer right so w111 weight going to layer 1 to neuron 1 coming from neuron 1 of layer 0 right 
Now what is this W21? Weights going to neuron 1. Uh, weights going to layer 1 to neuron 2 from neuron 1 of the previous. Right? So this thing you can write. Okay. So now I am writing for this Z11. Okay. So you can see there are neurons, uh, there are weights going to this. Mm, let me write this thing this way z11 is equal to w11 1 multiply with what x1 plus w12 1 multiply with what x2 plus w13 1 x3 right and with each you have some bias with each you have some bias okay and for z11 for this neuron as we are considering we are considering bias going to layer 1 and for neuron 1 this is the way you can write this thing z11 but we have written like this something like this so this is a vectorized version right so how to simplify that so you can see it's a multiplication of weights and your features so x is x1 x2 and x3 only one example right now i am considering x is x1 x2 x3 your weights is w11 1 w12 1 w13 1 this is your weights and this is weight going to layer 1 to neuron 1 weights going to layer 1 going to layer 1 to neuron 1 right and x right x is your features Bec no need to indicate layer because x features will go to the first new uh, first layer only then next onward this will be not x right or you can consider as a0 right later we will see this now you see you can see this size of w11 and x this is 3 cross 1 what is this this is also 3 cross 1 if I multiply that multiplication is not valid so what I will do I will take the transpose of this w11 transpose w11 transpose into x when i take this value this vertical thing that will become horizontal row will become column so w111 w121 w131 multiply with this column so row column now you know the multiplication rule so when this is the horizontal then the first term w11 multiply by x1 the next w121 multiply by x2 w131 multiply by x3 what is that this thing this thing right plus bias that is plus b11 so that I have written that is B11 right and what is this Z11 so this is Z11 so this is the simple way to write that right same way for Z22 also you can perform that Z31 also you can write that right 
but if you mm, okay let me write here if you observe the previous thing here mm, yes okay where well, I have written that thing yes z this one z1 is w1 x plus b1 so z1 is z1 means this thing z1 is w1 x plus b1 here I have not written transpose because what is this w1 w1 is the combination of this w1 1 transpose w2 1 transpose w3 1 transpose this thing right it is this thing only and what is this individual w1 1 transpose then the size of that is 1 cross 3 this is 1 cross 3 this is 1 cross 3 this is also 1 cross 3 so what w11 w1 is 3 cross 3 w11 is 3 cross 3 right what is x x is same x is 3 cross 1 and this is multiplication plus b11 b21 b31 what is that single value scalar and when you combine that then it will form a vector of 3 cross 1 so this multiplication is possible and this will result into 3 cross 1 plus 3 cross 1 that is also possible and what it will give it will give you z1 so size of z1 is 3 cross 1 why 3 cross 1 because it is combination of this only that's why 3 cross 1 any doubt in this Nitin rule number 2 Nitin any doubt in this okay tell me how you will indicate weights going to layer 3 to layer 2 neuron 2 of that layer and coming from la uh, neuron 1 weight going to layer 3 to neuron 2 coming from neuron 1 Nitin Graph samne usme se kuch means if you can answer. No. Drew rule number eleven. Drew roll number 11.
11. Unmute yourself and speak. I told you that Havana Nichal, mic is not working, right? Use your phone. And a phone na mic but dana chale. लेक्चर पर तेरे पहले चालू थे जो जो ये तारों वाजा हो जो ही हम्म आवे ने गिव मी द आंसर यस आई कैन हियर यू क्वेश्चन सु पूछो जो मैं सो ग्राम सुपर क्वेश्चन सूझे एक आदि मने के तो वेट नो बुझ दो इडले तो बच्चे कालू टीने हो क्योंकि हम मशीन लर्निंग ने एग्जाम चेट लो मने याद चाहे ये उछाल सा ना तो बच्चे गेम रम तो 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 बच्चे इलेक्ट्रिक लेवन कोई मतलब नहीं रहे बच्चे वादो नहीं तुम्हारी चॉइस चाहे सो व्हाट आई आस्क आई आस्क दैट हाउ यू विल इन्नोटेट द वेट गोइंग टू लेयर थ्री टू न्यूरॉन टू एंड कमिंग फ्रॉम न्यूरॉन वन एनीवन कैन आंसर W here in subscript in subscript three subscript three W three N so this is W what I need to write in subscript that tell me here two one and here three three and this is in square bracket right correct right so this is the correct thing w weight going to neuron uh, layer 3 going to neuron 2 coming from neuron 1 from previous layer which is the previous layer layer 2 layer 2 okay Z12, how you will indicate Z12? How you will write Z12? Mm, this is your Z1, uh, sorry, Z1, Z1, here Z12 or Z2, both are the same thing because only one neuron I have how we will write that Z1 into okay I think just wait huh? this is not Z, uh, Z1 this is actually Z11 this is actually Z11 right Z1 is W1 X plus B1. This is your Z1. Okay, yes, reserve. Uh, so Z1, Z1, W1. Z1, 1. Mm, here. Z1, Z1, 1. Z1, 1. Z1, 1. Like this. Okay, then W11 W11 plus B1 
here I, I need to mention something to see this graph and tell me okay, okay. Uh, just adding it z2 okay Rishabh, let me correct you z2 what is z2 this thing z21 after that we are doing something right and that is your output so a21 is g of z21 so here what will come a21 right so this is your a a11 multiply with w12 a11 multiply with w12 plus a21 a21 multiply w12 2 plus a3 1 multiply with w13 2 plus bias b1 2 now tell me z2 in the vector form this is for z1 for z2 okay or minimize this thing how you will write okay so this I can write like this W going to neuron 1 right going to neuron 1 and going to neuron 1 layer 2 and I need to take transpose right I need to take transpose I need to take transpose here and this thing this thing when I take this this will uh, this is W1 let me write like this okay and you can write like this as well this is the correct thing this w12 transpose but now we are not calculating for neuron 1 only but fortunately we have only one neuron right so this w12 transpose that will be that will be w2 only this is w2 only and what is this w2 this is w1 2 transpose yoga multiply with a of layer 1 means this vector a11 a21 a31 right so your a1 that is we can see what is the size of this vector a1 what is the size of this vector a1 3, three cross 1 3 cross 1 and what is the size of this three cross one cross three, sir. yes this is 1 cross 3 right it was w12 it was 3 cross 1 but we took the transpose of this so it is 1 cross 3 so now it's a 1 cross 1 plus your bias that is b2 and you can say b12 or b2 same thing 